we're back. Hey, Kim, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, Jean? I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic. But well, before we begin, because I know you got something, I know you got your Instant Pot out, and I can't wait to see it, because, like, who knows what you're going to be cooking, because one never knows with you. <laughs> so I can't wait. It's exciting. I'm but, cooking something really easy tonight. <gasps> Did you want to say something first, though? I do, because I one of our viewers had, because, like, apparently I'm technologically challenged with the Instant Pot, so I can't... I don't know how to make it not uh, go into the keep warm mode. So mm -hmm. one of our viewers uh, contacted me and said, hey, oh, by the way, if you press manual, set the time, and then press manual again, then the light that shows it's in going into the keep warm mode will not happen. It won't light up, so it'll shut off. Perfect. Oh, that's good to know. I have not field tested this, and maybe my Instant Pot is older and doesn't do that. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet, but... I will try and report back. So, and what? I noticed somebody else was asking about the time that, you know, when you uh -huh. set it, right? You know, yours always starts at thirty minutes, and right. mine goes to whatever it was that I made. Right. That. So um, that was I the feature of the new ones. Exactly, the newer ones do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I guess you... I have a new one. So tonight <laughs> I'm making barbecue jackfruit. Ooh. I, typically, I do it on in the crock pot. Mm -hmm. And I cook it for four to six hours because when you take it out of the can, it's actually really kind of tough and you have to break it apart with your hands. Uh -huh. you throw it in the crock pot and you cook it all afternoon. It kind of falls apart and it looks Ooh. a lot like whole pork. But I'm going to do it in the Instant Pot and I'm going to do it in okay. about 12 minutes. <gasps> okay. So what I did is I went, to the, I went to the Asian market and I bought uh -huh. green jackfruit in water. Oh. You can get it in water and then you can get it in brine, but mine is in water. Uh-huh. Coolest thing, yesterday I went to Trader Joe's, and guess what they sell? No way. Yes. Oh, they my just, gosh. You know, the only difficulty I have with this, and you would struggle with it, is it's in brine. So Ooh. it's going to be healthy, so you're going to have to really, really rinse it um, okay. well. But when I go to the Asian market, I buy a case of this. Okay. And then I just have it. So we're going to put, I already sauteed peppers and onions uh -huh. um, on the saute mode. Yeah. Just to get it to caramelize a little bit and get some of those sweet right. flavors. So we're going to put two cans of jackfruit in here. Now, the one you get from the Amazon market, can you get that on, or from the Oriental market, can you get that on Amazon? I think so. I think so. It's called um, Lucia. Uh huh. And I think you can get it on, on uh, you can okay. get it on Amazon. But the thing is, if you get young green jackfruit, it, uh, it'll fall apart and you don't really need to cook it for as Ooh, long. Okay. This in particular takes a little while. So I'm going to take one out because I want to show everybody. This is what it kind of looks like. Can you see that, Jane? Oh, yeah, the texture, yeah. Yeah, so it kind of, you know, it's still kind of tough. Mm -hmm. You know, some people say, you know, you can cut this off and take the seeds out. I don't do it. I just throw it all away. Uh, don't, don't do that. Okay. Um, you can do the entire thing. So you're going to put it on manual. Let's see. If I stand up. I'm going to cut myself off, but just bear with me here. Line it up. And then you're going to close the valve because you want it to come to pressure. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to click manual. And okay. I'll mine for, I did it for 10 minutes today, and I thought it was a little bit it, – it didn't fall apart as much as I wanted. So I'm going to put it at about 13 minutes. So it okay. takes, takes about 10 to 12 minutes to come to pressure. Okay. And then it's doing its thing. So we can gab all you want about food, <laughs> and we'll let them cook for a while. And except, you know we will. Except I just – forgot something really important because it's barbecued jackfruit i'm going to hit the cancel button and i'm going to put um the bone sucking sauce okay. because you wouldn't want to put that on on pressure without the sauce in there so you can put about two-thirds of a can of bone sucking sauce oh in. my god that stuff is so good too yeah so we'll start over again and then we'll go to manual and it's at 13, so we're good. Okay. But I did want to mention, I found this stuff. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Num Num Sauce. No, I have not. What is that? It's another barbecue sauce. And if you're from North Carolina, depending uh -huh. on where in North Carolina, some are more vinegary, some are more mustard-based, mm -hmm. more sweet, ketchup-y. But this is more of a mustard base. So I thought, I got it, I got it at Whole Foods. So I thought, you could mix this with the um, bone sucking sauce and you might get something really interesting and this was lower in sugar and lower in salt 
Okay. So yeah. maybe we'll have to try that next week and see how that goes. Yeah. So, shoo. All right. <laughs> we are cooking. <laughs> All right. We're cooking. We are cooking tonight. No question yeah. about it. We're hot. No doubt. So, one of the things people want to know is, you know, you have two cookbooks, two amazing, and probably my two of my favorites cookbooks, and they're all marked up. They've got little tabs and ears, and I write notes, and, you know, I really get to into my cookbooks, but how do you come up with your recipes? Explain to us the process. You know, I have in my, in my head, I grew up, my mom was a wonderful cook and I have three sisters and a brother, two sisters and a brother. And we all cooked and we had gardens and it was just what we did at our house. So, so a lot of recipes I sort of have in my head. I know how to make meatballs. I know how to make lasagna and I know how to make a lot of those traditional recipes. So I base it on that. And then I go to non-traditional, non-vegan recipes if I have an idea, like let's say I want to make moussaka. I might go look in at very traditional moussaka recipes and then do what I call veganize them. So come up with really interesting substitutions that still give you that mouthfeel and that, that flavor. And then the last thing I do, if it doesn't come out quite right, I might dance around at some vegan recipes and see what did, what did other people do. So just looking at a lot of resources and then building on my, my own knowledge from growing up because we were all cooks in my family. And then I come up with a recipe and I love to take traditional comfort foods and make them healthy. Well, that, um, that leads us right into the next part of our, our show. And we had an idea last show to come up with recipes I sent you, your challenge was my date nut bread that has been in my family for, I don't know, I guess it was from my Aunt Helene. She came up with this recipe in 1939. I guess it was dated on the card. So I don't know if it's been in our family previous to that, and she just wrote it down in 1939. I don't know. But you took that recipe, so I can't wait to see. What did you do to my Aunt Helene's recipe, and how did it turn out? This is what's left of your <laughs> recipe. I am not oh my kidding. gosh. I made this last night at, I don't know, it came out of the oven about nine o'clock and um, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I had to hide these two pieces, but it's amazing. So, what she, did you do? The only thing she really had in there that, well, I, I changed a couple of things. She had a pound of pitted dates. I cut the recipe in half because mm -hmm. it looks like she was going to make three loaves with it. I just wanted to make one kind of big hearty loaf. So okay. I cut the dates in half to a half a pound, which came out to be about two cups of dates. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of dates. But I wanted to follow the recipe just to see what I initially got. Right. And I had two cups of sugar. Wow, I did that's a lot of sugar. On top of the date, so I, yeah. I left out the sugar completely because I really? knew that gonna, I did, I did, and it it was, and then so you take the dates and you put it in the water and you boil it with some butter. I left out the butter too, and I boiled the dates so they came, you know, kind of came down to a nice sort of pasty consistency. Uh -huh. Then I took the dates and I took the water that they were boiling in, and I added a cup of soy milk, put it in the blender, and then I mm -hmm. added um, balsamic vinegar. That'll help to activate your baking soda, so it'll give it a little more poof. Okay. So I put that in there, and then I blended it in my Vitamix. So that was my wet mixture. And then the dry mixture was flour. I used whole wheat pastry flour, baking soda. I did cut that a little bit because mm -hmm. since I used the vinegar, I didn't want to overpower it. I had salt and vanilla and two cups of walnuts. So I put about a half to two-thirds cup of walnuts in it, mm -hmm. and then I had to add raisins. It, it just didn't seem right without raisins. <laughs> okay. And then I baked it at 350 for an hour. And Jean, it was moist. It was sweet. It wow. was it felt like a, a cookie bread. Really? Uh, yeah. And I, I wanted to have it for breakfast with something on it. But it was it was really, really awesome. Well, traditionally, we would serve either butter or sour, not sour cream, uh, cream cheese with that. So... Uh, can we substitute something for those non-good things? I think I would just put a fruit spread on there, like an unsweet okay. spread. Maybe, you know, just throw some raspberry puree or um, if you're into honey, that's fine. But, you know, you didn't really need the sweet. You just needed something, maybe a little tart, you know, like the uh -huh. berry. But this was amazing. I think this is going to, you know, you I would turn it into muffins, too. Oh, um, okay. 
super easy to make. So anyways, I think you gave me an easy, an easy assignment. And I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not a baker, but this was awesome. Okay. Well, tell us about what you sent to me. So I don't have it with me, but I sent you something. You know how when you go to the grocery store and you see those silly little magazines, uh -huh. Betty magazines of casseroles and soups and stews? Well, I always end up buying them. And I have stacks of them. I was going to get them out to show you, but I have probably 50 of them. And they're all just unhealthy and traditional recipes. And I love to take those and make them plant-based. So I think mm -hmm. I gave you one. It was a chicken. Was it chicken and, and pasta? It was a chicken pasta bake. Yes. Yes. So, obviously we don't do chicken. So instead of the chicken, what I did is I used the Butler soy curls and mm -hmm. I actually uh, recorded this. I got my GoPro out. And so we'll have the video coming soon. Uh, as soon as I can sit down and edit it. <laughs> Just need that time. So, so that'll be coming soon. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel because as soon as I post it, it'll, it'll go up there. But so I took the Butler soy curls and I used that in place of the chicken, obviously. And they used or wanted to use gravy, chicken gravy. And uh -huh. so instead of a chicken gravy, I chose a mushroom gravy. Uh -huh. And I think next time I've got a different gravy I'm going to try next time because, and I did look at the picture before to see how it turned out. I wanted to see what it looked like after, you know, what I did. And because I had an image in my mind, so mm -hmm. different from obviously what they had. Were you thinking kind of like a stroganoff, Jean? Like I was. A I was thinking more like a, like a, like that level of richness of 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 a stroganoff, you know, a darker sauce. And so uh, next time, so here's what what it came out to look like. I topped it with some fresh corn, uh, just raw corn. I took some right off the cob and I added it on top, and it added such a nice crunch to it. So then you used a bag of frozen vegetables and you know, to add to that. And then you mixed it all up. And I used the whole wheat breadcrumbs um, mm -hmm. for on top. I found a good one. Panko's has a good one. Instead of Parmesan cheese. Right. right. Well, no, no, no. They, did, they had breadcrumbs actually in, the, in that. Okay. But the breadcrumbs that they had wanted to use and mix it with butter. So it would crisp up uh, in the oven. But I just put the breadcrumbs and I mixed it with an herb because they wanted you to use herb uh, breadcrumbs. So instead of, I just used the regular whole wheat and then I added some herbs de Provence. So to give it that, that, uh, herb flavor. And then I made the gravy out of mushrooms and added the gravy, the pasta, cooked it in the oven and then put on the breadcrumbs, uh, at the end. So I will have the cooking video for that. And of course the recipe will be up on my website oh, as well as the recipe for the, the date nut bread. So, mm -hmm. Both Great. of those will be there. So that I was, was gonna, our challenge. I was going to post your date nut bread on Plant Pure Nation, if you don't mind. Oh, of course. Please. <laughs> I'll definitely credit you, but it, it's such a good recipe that I wanted to make oh, it available to people. Absolutely. No, well, that's the whole point of this, because it's going to go in the video and here, because we'll have it below. And, it, you know, plant, post it wherever, because yeah. my Aunt Helene would be proud. Yeah. I have a date bread recipe, too, but this one's much better. And well, it's there a we go recipe so all right so yeah. we have now next we have some our favorite plant-based tips and my first tip or trick or whatever you want to call it I like uh, cooking non-stick so I've got a couple things that help to cook non-stick this is my pat you know like a it's a silicone uh, rubber mat and you can see I, I use it I mean there's no question and I love it I just you know when I'm done after I wash and dry it then I just roll it up and just put a rubber band around it and it goes right into my cabinet so do you ever have problems with that sticking ever I have never had anything stick to it I mean ever I mean obviously I don't make pancakes or anything in there but you know I'm making more things like cookies or or vegetables and things like that so that's my my first trick I also like to use you know parchment paper to mm -hmm. put them on cookie trays that's also another good one so my next one and these are this pan here it's called the Gotham copper pan and my mother has one of those tell and, me about it <clears throat> well I, I love it it's not that expensive and I found it, we have a group of stores up here called the Christmas Tree Shop in the, on the East Coast. And, and it's all, I've also found this at Bed Bath & Beyond as well. And there's a whole series of these. And I don't know, 
the specs on them um, because it is, you know, a lining and it is on the back, you know, it's a little aluminum pant. So um, you've got two different surfaces that are trying to expand. And okay, here's the science teacher coming out in me. So you've got different expansion rates happening. The aluminum is expanding at one and then this is almost like a ceramic uh, coating on, on this side. So you've got these two forces that are, you know, going at different rates. So eventually this is going to break down. So when you start to see that, and they don't, they don't last very long, maybe about six months, and you can't, I've had them chip, you know, they're, they're, they chip pretty easily. So mm -hmm. I have them hanging over my, my stove and keep that going, you know, up there so that they're hanging up there. So I, I've used these quite a bit. I don't know the specs on them. I'm, I'm hoping that nobody comes up and says, yeah, this is really bad, like the Teflon kind of thing, but until I know better, you know, I've been using this one. And if anybody has any information on those pots or pans, I would love to hear about them. I have an, I have induction burners here in my kitchen. So uh -huh. I want those would work on an induction burner. Good question. I, cause I have a gas stove so that I use this with gas. So I don't know if it would work. I mean, I, they're not that expensive. So, you know, yeah. 20 bucks at the most you're, yeah. you're using. And I don't even know how to say this brand and it's backwards. Uh, so in my picture, but this is a skillet that is absolutely awesome. This is, uh, you know, and the copper pans also have this in the skillet, but it's very hard to find. Right. When I do find it, I'll buy one or two. I found actually the pancakes don't stick hardly at all on the, the Gotham copper pans. Uh, this one is pretty good, but again, after a while, it's almost like the finish wears off and you can tell because they don't flip as easy, the pancakes. So you know, this is my, you know, my go-to griddle. So I'll have, you know, one or one or two of those things. Um, so those are my non, my non-stick tips. So yeah, how about you? That's exciting. I want to know if that one will work <clears throat> on a production burner because I would get one if it did. Okay. So I have some tips. The first one, and I always go to the, the frozen because so many people, these are just frozen bell peppers and onions. Okay. People, Trader Joe's. Yeah, this is Trader Joe's, right. I do a lot of shopping there, but you can get these at Walmart. You can get them at Lowe's and mm -hmm. Harris. But so many people are almost a little snobby about food, thinking that it always has to be fresh. And it's lovely. It can be fresh and come from the farmer's market. But it's okay if you if you get it frozen. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's flash frozen. It's freshly picked and harvested. So you're getting almost more nutrients with, with some of this. So I tend to keep onions and peppers in the freezer a lot. Mm -hmm. I also have uh, another example would be the shredded hash browns. There's no oil in these. And I know you use these <laughs> your, uh, waffle iron. Yes. I, and I use them. I, sometimes I put them out on parchment paper, just like what you said. And we bake them for breakfast in the morning. And I just season them a little bit. Or I use them in quiches. I, I make the quiche crust with, with these. These are great. And you don't have to go to Trader Joe's to get them. You can go to... Walmart, Harris, Cedar, Lowe's, Ralph's, wherever but you are. But usually you have to look, you have to be very careful because a lot of times they will add salt and they will add oil. They will. And these two, they didn't. And yes. you're exactly right because you have to be really careful. Um, they do yes. add a lot of oil to the mm -hmm. frozen vegetables. So just get the straight vegetables. Right. And one that I like a lot um, is frozen sweet potatoes. Oh, yes. Um, yes. I like know, that one a lot too. Yeah, because the recipe might call for mashed sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm like in a burger, for example, and who has time to peel it, cut it, boil it, you know, all of that. Exactly. So, so I keep these on hand and I did get this at Whole Foods, but I think they have them at a lot of mainstream grocery stores. Mm -hmm. so, so think frozen because it saves money, it saves, saves time, and the nutrient value isn't really any different. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, so that's my second tip. And then my, my last tip, my last tip is when I make cookies or brownies, mm -hmm. you know, you put your dry ingredients together well you can do it twice and you can put it in a baggie and you you essentially have a brownie mix or a cookie mix or a muffin so you can just mix. grab it you just grab it and all and then on the back i just write down what i need to have you oh, can read my the gosh bag. so this is for my nut butter brownies nice nice and then on the back it says exactly what i need and i think i need five ingredients which is just the wet ingredients so rather than buying those box processed yes time, mixes you can you, you can do this and if you have kids they can get it out and add their ingredients it's super easy and then just um, bake it perfect exactly and then the last thing i don't really have anything to show for it 
is to make dressings every week. Make them ahead of time because they're they're really expensive, and the dressings and that you get in the supermarket are loaded with salt and oh, sugar yeah. and, and oil. It's almost impossible to find one without oil and, and chemicals. Chemicals, you're exactly right. But if you find that one without the, the oil, then it's got the chemicals and it's got right. the sugar to make up for it. Yes. So just make a couple of dressings. I know that the Esselstyns have a three, two, one. Yes. Uh, vinegar, maple syrup. Is it, how does it go? Vinegar, mustard, maple syrup. Three tablespoons, two tablespoons, one tablespoon. It's a three, two, one recipe. It is three, two, one. And I can never remember which one's three, which one's two, which one's one. I'm pretty sure three is three is vinegar. Two is mustard and one is maple syrup. I'm pretty sure you're right. Change the vinegar. You can change yes. the kind of mustard. Yes. Make it ahead of time. Put it in a mason jar and, and you have it. You don't even have to think about well, it. Well, you know I love your Italian dressing. That's to totally my favorite. Absolutely right. my favorite. And there's a ton of dressings in, in both of my cookbooks, but you know, and there's tons on the on the on, on the web that you can find. But just find those two. Well, or what's three. your favorite? What do you, like, what's your go-to? I love the ranch. The ranch and the Caesar, I really like. And then I like the sweet mustard, too. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Um, I'm going to yeah. have to try those. Yeah. Yeah. So that those are pretty much my tricks in a nutshell. Frozen, making ahead, you know, your, your cookie and your brownie mixes, and then make your dressings every week. Okay. Well, speaking of batch cooking or making a bunch of things for the week, this is my steel cut oats. I add, I make the steel cut oats add a little bit of almond milk. I add a little bit, like maybe for, this is for a whole pot for the, like my husband and I for the week. I'll add maybe just one or two tablespoons of maple syrup. This is for a whole pot. And I'll add a little bit of coconut extract, a little bit of almond milk and maple extract too. That gives it that, that flavor. So, and I'll put that in there and let that cook. You know, I usually put the, all the ingredients after the, the oats have cooked. And then I let that cool. And I mean completely cool so that it is totally like almost like refrigerator cold. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add frozen berries. And I put them in right at the end just before I put them into the jar. And you can even see they start to bleed a little bit as they defrost. Mm -hmm. So, and that's fine. Uh, but it tends to, and, and if you put them in earlier, they tend to make it have a gray pasty kind of color. So mm -hmm. I try not to do that and put them right in right at the end. But I just mm -hmm. love having, you know, and I, I don't put a ton of berries in there, just almost like a, a condiment, um, mm -hmm. just add a little bit of, of sweetness. So I batch cook this and then I'll pull this out. In the summertime, I eat it cold. You mm -hmm. know, it's very refreshing to me cold. But in the wintertime, I'll heat this up. I'll add a little bit of, of almond milk to it uh, just to give it a little bit of, of liquidy texture and we're good to go idea, because you can have them ahead of time you don't have to eat them just for breakfast you can have well, them for right lunch. well when my kids were around they would come come and open up the refrigerator and just pull one out and start eating it that's mm -hmm. like hey hey you're eating my breakfast you know yeah but i'm hungry okay I, you know whatever eat that i'd rather you eat that than than you know garbage so that's that and my other tip and trick and you know nothing to show is just pre-cut and pre-package your vegetables. On Sunday, I'm batch cooking. I lay out in front of me. I make 10 trays of salad and have that ready for the whole week. I make uh, berries, you know, cups of berries, you know, and those I usually just do like maybe one day, maybe two days because the berries go bad very quickly. What else? I will do cucumbers uh, for just a day, usually, because the cucumbers will go quickly, too. But then I'll have carrots and celery, and I'll do those for two days ahead of time. And just chopping, prepping, and having that. So in the morning, I get up, I pull out of the refrigerator, and put it into my cooler. So. Right. You can, do a, you can prep a lot of those, those drier produce items that don't get slimy. Right. Ahead of, you know, exactly. Four exactly. Or five days. Yeah. Exactly. And the salads yeah. last for the week, you know, and I take, I take, I have a little refrigerator at school and I take a bottle, a big bottle of the dressing. I'll make, you know, like I make batches of it, like I'll like do it like three or four batches at once and then I'll make bottles of it. And so my husband will take some to work. I'll take some to work and then we have some at home. So, mm -hmm. you know, and usually that'll go about a week, week and a half. And then when he, when the jar is empty, he brings it home. I bring it home, and then I take it, make another batch, and send it back to school, and have it at home. So it works out, you know, really, really well. So what I hear you saying is always be prepared. You know, think ahead. Plan exactly. Ahead. 
You just put a little bit of planning into it. You don't get into those fixes where you don't know what to have for lunch or you don't have anything for breakfast and you're, you know, things are cut up ahead of time. Really, I, I can't exactly. stress planning is so important. It is. And you can't, I always carry food with me wherever I'm going. Either I'm taking like the Plant Pure Nation, you know, the frozen veggie trays, or I'm taking food that I've already cooked and prepared ahead of time. Your Instant Pot just went into low mode, by the way. I know, I heard it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to make sure you knew. I'm going to release the pressure, but there's hardly any pressure in it. So okay. we'll let it sit there for a minute, but you keep going. All right. I think we're ready to go on to our next phase. You know what? While we're, while we're transitioning, let me just open this up and see what's happening. Ooh, lots of things happening in here. Okay. What do we got going on in there? What I do with, with jackfruit typically is it gets really soft after it's been in the crock pot for a long time. And I'll open it up and just kind of uh -huh. stir it. Since it's in the Instant Pot, you can't really open it up and do that. But I'm just going to take a potato masher uh -huh. and I'm going to go in here and just kind of mash it up. There's a, there's a lot of sauce in here. Hang on. Oh, let's see. I might let it sit just a little longer, Jean, because okay. it's very, very hot. And well, let's let it cool down. Yeah, very hot, and I think it will fall apart a little more. You, what, what you want is you, you want the jackfruit to start to fall apart, so you have like stringy pieces, and I, and I've got that, but I, I just like it to sit a little bit longer. So let's do that, and we'll come back. We'll revisit that at the end. All right. <laughs> We're on to our favorite resources, and this is one of my favorites. This is one of the first, and I know the, the, the my book is backwards, but uh, I'll post it forward. But this is called Peas and Thank You, and this is by Sarah Matheny. And this is one of the first books that I bought a long, long time ago. And, you know, some of her recipes are a little bit, she uses processed foods and, and sometimes oils and things like that, but easy to, to modify uh, this and I really like she's got some really creative ideas and I go to this often uh, and if you look at my book I just I have notes all over the place it's you know it's, it, food gets all over it it gets cooked on so um, mm, that looks like a good one I don't have that one no I like this one this was I and I've not seen this in you know in mainstream so I have it no that's not one you pull off the Barnes and Noble shelf so no <laughs> I don't and I don't know where I got it from you know somewhere in my travels but but mm -hmm. uh, all right, what's your what's one of your favorite resources? Well, I'm going to mention your starchqueens.net. Oh, okay. Dot net. That's Jean's website, which has a ton of resources. But what I love about Jean is that she takes videos. She takes you know cooking videos. So and they're quick. They're really fast. They're quick and they're motivating, and she makes it look really really simple. So um, I. Okay. Go there for great recipes and you know videos and all kinds of resources on physician resources, yes. Um, yes. articles, things like that. So 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 visit StarchQueens.net. Okay. Well, thank you for that plug. So yeah. that was very nice of you. Um, I put I I stop, I got really tired of people going. So what's your favorite recipe? Oh, just go to my website. It's right yeah. there. Um, so what website should I, it's go to my website? It's, yeah, well, I love, I love your so. videos. And, and, you know, people don't realize there's a lot of work involved in those videos. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The lighting and the camera and all of it. So, well, you know, the I, prep. I mean, just getting ready for these interviews and or, or just cooking. And, I and, appreciate that. I mean, it's just, yeah, you're right. A cooking class, a video. Oh, when you, you yeah. know, you feel like you've got, you know, three million bags hanging over the top of you and cameras and different things. So. I know. It's well, I have, I, I do, and it's, now that school's almost down, I'm going to start doing it. I've got a couple more scheduled cooking days where I have my, my sous chef, Marilyn, and we just have the best time. We get together, we talk and we gab and we catch up with each other and visit and we're cooking. And, you know, in the meantime, you know, recording this step and that step. And then, you know, after we, we do about five at a time and then yeah. I, you know, sit down and edit when I can sit down for, yeah. you know, five minutes together. So. All right. Yeah. All right, let me show you my next one. I've been reading this. This is uh, Neil Bernard's book. It's called The Cheese Trap. Good one. OMG. I mean, first of all, the book is amazing. I mean, you wouldn't expect anything, you know, less from, you know, Neil Bernard. But this book, I am just blown away. First of all, I kind of knew 
the process of cheese and how it was made, but he really explains how it's made. And my question is, how did somebody come up with this? I mean, seriously, seriously. How, when you stop to think about it, and he really points this out, is you, where did we come up with this idea? Because you have to add bacteria, you have to do this, and there are all these steps, and it's like, and along the way, and some of the bacteria is the same bacteria as we have as body odor and, and what make, the, the smell, the bacteria that makes our feet smell. They use that in cheese. I'm like, uh, are you kidding me? Are, are you kidding me? Well, oh, my God. Well, so, think about what blue cheese smells like or Asiago <laughs> cheese. I mean, it's, it's stinky. Cheese is stinky. I, I, and I've never cared for those. I mean, just that's, I guess, my, my nose going, yeah, no. Uh, but... Wow, and I I learned a lot. I really did. It was a it was a fascinating book. Uh, just really explained so much to me. So mm -hmm. that's uh, my never next resource. That yeah, yeah I like, like that. Well, my next one is a it's a website called potatostrong.com, and it's Will and his wife Bonnie, and they've just got all kinds of really good recipes. My absolute favorite is his barbecue cauliflower wings. O M G! Wow. Wow. I I make that. I make that for the for the carnivores and they love it. Oh my gosh. They'll sit there and eat that like and I put it on the table and it was so funny. My sister goes, uh, "What's that?" And, you know, it's just that that uh, and she's like, "Ah, forget it. I don't care." She picked it up and started chowing down, down on it and the next thing I know, both plates. I had two plates. One was spicy and one was not. And I forgot and I mixed them up and I forgot which one was which, but uh, whatever. So the plates were gone, you know, and they were like, oh, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know that website, so I'll have to check that out. Oh, the potato. Oh, my God. Not the potato. The, I thought I knew the barbecue. All. Oh, the barbecue. Oh, you know, I've really probably been on it. I've been on so many different sites yeah. that I can't even remember the names of all of them. Right, but. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I, well, and that's what this is good for. So, yeah. Okay, so um, let's go on to our, oh, go ahead. Are we I ready? I have one, one more resource. Okay. Was the, the Veggie Queen. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm probably not going to pronounce her last name right, but Jill Nassano. Uh -huh. She also writes a book called Vegan Under Pressure. So if you want to know how to use this beast. Okay. Uh, she has videos and she has a website and she has a cookbook now. So Ooh. anyway, and I actually went to her when I was trying. I did, I did Jill McKeever's website, but I uh -huh. also went to um, the Veggie Queen because she had some great videos too. So oh, excellent. Excellent. Plug. No, that's a good one because I, I'm still learning, clearly, you know. Mm -hmm. and, we all are. Uh, we all are. Well, and I, I hate getting the directions out. I do. I just hate, you know, if I can't figure it out, if I can't look at it and go, I have to press this button here and there, and, you know, if I can't figure it out, it's like, Meh. Yeah. you know, then I'll yeah. put it out there in a video and go, does anybody know? know and you'll I get, get an answer. <laughs> so, but it would help if I read the directions, but I don't, so. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about our, our favorite processed foods. What do you okay. got tonight? I don't really consider this a processed food, but I'm going to mention it anyways. And that is um, vinegars. Oh um, yeah. This is a vinegar that somebody gave me as a gift. It says olive oil on top, but it's not it's not olive oil. It's vinegar that um, a lot of these vinegar shops they uh -huh. sell exotic oils and they sell vinegars. Yes. So, in your town, check out to see if you have a you know a private vinegar oil shop because they'll have those. Uh, we have one in Mabin and we have one in Chapel Hill and I get them in these little containers. Oh. This one is a white balsamic vinegar uh -huh. and this one is a maple, which I love maple. But there's another one called the, I think I sent you the website, which will show up on the screen. You can order vinegars online. Uh -huh. This one happens to be a blueberry, but you know, you don't even need to make a salad. If you're in a hurry, you can just put this straight on your salad. It's wonderful. Right. Well, I use the Bima and Paws. They, uh, she's the, her name's Chef Terry out of Chicago. So that's, uh, my favorite. And she's at plant stock every year. I'm going to be at plant stock again this year and hope that uh, other people can come because that's like my favorite. Right. It's like to me, the Mecca of the plant based world going up right. to the, going up to the farm. This will be my fifth yeah. year. So yeah. she's always there at, at the farm selling the, the balsamic vinegars. And each year she adds more stuff. She's got seasonings now amazing the flavors are just unbelievable just and you just need a little bit 
And, you know, support your local businesses, too, because mm-hmm. there are a lot of these bigger cities and towns, they have vinegar shops. So, you know, check it out. I didn't know Chapel Hill had one until um, I looked it up online. So okay. it's definitely a, a, a really fun option. They have every flavor in the book. It's like going to a winery and wine tasting. You go right. vinegar tasting. It's fun. Well, that's what she does. Chef Terry does it at Plant Stock is she's got them all lined up and people wow. can tr- try and taste them and, and see you what would they have like. no idea how varied vinegars oh will my take. gosh yes. i had no idea no and the flavors are my two favorite flavors of hers the first one was pineapple and i'm like pineapple really until i went oh yes. this is really good this is really yeah. good and i'll gosh. drizzle that over kale kale mushroom and mashed potatoes mm-hmm. oh, oh my gosh so good yeah but then she came out with racy mango and that was now my new personal favorite uh-huh so that sounds really good okay so what's your what's your favorite? Process? Well, I've got a little theme going here. One is uh, these are the ingredients that I use to make peanut butter uh, sauce that you could drizzle over, say, like sweet potatoes and broccoli, and drizzle that. and And I use this in a lot of of different things. So the first thing that I use is called uh, pure coconut extract, and it's actually from the Olive Nation as well. I get this on Amazon. Now this one, a lot of these, and you have to be careful and look at how they're processed because a lot of them are processed with oil. So this one is not. So it's just, and it's processed with alcohol. So just a little bit of this goes a long way. So, and I'll use this in like almond milk to mimic coconut milk. So I'll use that to reduce the fat uh, in that. But along the same lines, I've got this, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'm just going to say this right, but sambal oleic. Uh, Oleg, yeah, Oleg, right. okay. This is uh, ground fresh chili paste, and the specs are not. I mean, for one teaspoon, <laughs> there's no calories. Okay, hmm. All right, but whatever. Uh, but there is 100 milligrams of sodium, so you know, zero calories, 100 milligrams. That seems like a lot, but 100 milligrams is not that much. So but again, you're using it like you would use salt, or you know, like exactly. A using small amounts of it oh, for a big dish. You don't need much. This exactly. is this is really spicy. So yeah. this is like, oh, wow, uh, hotness. So, so it's kind of like a sriracha almost. Exactly, exactly. So I, yeah, I use this in the, in the chili paste, and that really works out well. What do you got? I have miso. Oh. And a lot of people don't know what miso is. Mm-hmm. And they see it in my, in my recipes, and I've often said to people, if you don't have miso, just use sea salt um, because it's very salty. And what uh-huh. it is, fermented soybeans, and it okay. actually has probiotic in it. And they ferment it in a variety of things. Some of them use rice. They add rice to it. They add barley. It's very, it's, it's got a salty sort of savory flavor to it. Mm-hmm. And they come in different colors. So right. when you think of, and this one is a brown rice miso. They have chickpea miso. Mm-hmm. When you think of miso, think of beer. So the lighter the beer, the mm-hmm. milder it tastes, right? The darker, right. the richer it gets. It's the right. same with miso. The darker the miso gets, the richer, um, and it just creates more depth. So if you if you get a red, a dark miso, you don't need a, a lot, just a little bit. Okay. I, I tend to always use the white just because I'm not very daring that way. And I bought this one, which is the organic brown rice miso. I think mm-hmm. I spent about ten dollars, but this will last you for ever. I know. <laughs> I keep them in the refrigerator, and they seem to they they don't go bad, and they seem to be fine. Yeah. So, but they, but they are salty and they are high in sodium. So again, think of it. It's a condiment, it's like a condiment. you would season with salt. Yeah. And I have never made miso soup, but I would like to try it. You just have to make sure if you're getting, if you're using miso soup to get those probiotics that you're not putting it in boiling water, mm-hmm. killing the bacteria. Cause you want, you want to, you want that bacteria to be alive. It's nice. kind of like, like yogurt. Right. So, anyways, well, and I have a video on how to make miso soup. Perfect. That's great. So, so that'll go along with this nicely. All right. Well, and the last ingredient for my peanut butter uh, sauce is peanut butter. But peanut butter is really, really high in fat, and a lot of them add salt or sugar to them. So what this is, and this is on Amazon, it's called protein peanut butter powder, but they don't add protein. It's not added to it. It's just that there's protein in peanuts. Right, so, yeah. and, and, and they use the word protein for marketing purposes, but they don't add you know, more protein to it. So 
This and a lot of the pro the peanut butter powders add salt and sugar to mm -hmm. them to make them taste sweeter and better. You know, more you know, turbocharging it to our to our taste buds. But this, I bought a bot. Uh, I think it's thirty two ounces that it comes in in a package for like twelve dollars on Amazon. This will last a year. Uh, you know, it's it's it it goes a long long way. So I'll keep it in the refrigerator in in a jar. And then just take out a scoop here or there when I need a peanut butter flavor. So it cuts I like down. Use, I like to use that in a burger to give oh. it the peanut butter, butter kind of flavor without putting all the peanut butter in it. Okay. Sweet peanut burger. Yeah. Okay. I've not, I've, I'll have to try that. Yeah. Okay. But the specs on this are not bad. So in a quarter of a cup, there's a 110 calories. And the fat in this, calories from fat is only 35. So that brings it to 32% fat, which most peanut butters are like 80% fat. So, yeah, right. so this really drops the, the fat down a lot. So mm -hmm. obviously if you're doing something like a maximum weight loss, you wouldn't be using the, the, the peanut powder. Uh, right. But, you know, the other two ingredients give it a nice kick to it uh, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. make a sauce. So Yeah. That's How about great. you? You got something else? I don't have it with me because we ran out, but it's the Benson salts. I should have asked okay. you. Uh, Jean, can you, can you show your, I know you, you use Benson salts. Well, I got them down in the kitchen, but I won't get them, That's but okay. I'll put them up. I'll put up there's, pictures. There's a big variety and I really like them. There's no salt in them at all. And they use, the one that I had had some nutritional yeast flakes mm -hmm. in it, it, had some bell peppers and some kind of citrus flavors. It, it's really nice. It, it, it does what you want salt to do. It makes the flavors pop. Those are nice options, especially if you're on salt-free diet. And you okay. can, as far as I know, you can only get them on Amazon because I went to Whole Foods. I looked in Trader Joe's. I've looked in the grocery stores. I've never been able to find them. No. And I found them, I think, in, in the Christmas tree shops of all places. They had a nice package of them, you know, whole set. So I was like, ooh, I'll buy this. Mm -hmm. So I found it there. That was, you know, a unique find. Right. You know, with the Christmas tree shops, they have stuff all the time that's changing. So it's a hit or miss kind of thing. But uh, Amazon has them for sure. I think I can probably, I'm going to cut my head off here, show you oh. a little bit. Well, I think that's about it because I think we're about out of time. So, oh my gosh, look at that. <gasps> oh my God, yum. So tonight we're going to have this. I'm going to put sprouts on it and some uh -huh. avocados. Oh, well. How could you not off. like anything without an avocado, please? Yeah. I mean. Well, you, you know, you know, if you don't want to have avocado and you're cutting back down on your fat, then you could always just put coleslaw on it or sprouts yeah. or, or whatever. But it's, it's an amazing. Oh, my God. That looks awesome. I think yeah. I'm going to have to try that for the carnivores and see how they do. They will like it. Definitely. Yeah. I'll have to try that. Well, Kim, it's as always, it's a pleasure. So yeah, this was fun. I yeah. wish you were here to join me. Oh my gosh, I know. I mean, it's, I feel like I can smell that. I mean, actually, last week after you made the Moroccan, uh, was it Moroccan stew that you made? I went down and made it. Uh huh. And 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 it was interesting because I had friends. You know, somebody called me up and I'm like, Hey, have you had dinner? They're like, No. I'm like, Come over. I got Moroccan stew. Big. I made a big pot of it. So we're like, okay, this is great. So we had a party. We had an impromptu party. Well, so well, what we made last week was the Ethiopian oh, stew. Oh, I keep saying oh. Moroccan, but. but because I have a Moroccan stew in the Plant Pure Kitchen cookbook, and there's a video that's why. on YouTube. That's that's why. So that's why because I have it in my head. But yeah, Ethiopian stew. So I made the I, as soon as we as soon as we were done recording, I went right to the kitchen because that looked so fabulous. But yeah. I don't have any jackfruit, so I'll have to order some and try that. That looks yeah, amazing. Yeah, some jackfruit and try it. It's uh, it's a great it's a great recipe. You can do it with soy curls too. You don't have to use jackfruit. You can use soy curls and make like a barbecued. Well, uh, even like the the, but even like instead of the bread, you could just put it over rice. Absolutely, and you could put yeah. it on top of a. You know, if you cool down a little bit, it could be the meat part of your salad or your taco or. Ooh. You know, salsa in here i mean it takes yeah. on the flavor of whatever you cook it with so yeah. it's uh it's really a fun a fun fruit but i've had people say to me oh mine didn't turn out quite like yours because they bought the ripe jackfruit which tastes like oh. i was told my daughter said it tastes like juicy fruit gum so you don't want to get it ripe when you want to get it when it's green so okay good to know 
because I've yeah. never I've never used jackfruit, so this will be a new experience for me. So yeah, yeah. Oh, well, thank you, Jean, for doing this, and it was a lot of fun. I always learn always. a lot. Well, we do. I I always learn from you every time, every video. It's it's awesome. So yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I will see you on the next video. Yes. Have a great evening.